Okay, so time to go through and see if we can go about correcting bugs, issues, etc. in the Inferno programming with Limbo. have the example code here. Let me go through. We're gonna try to build these. See what kind of bugs we get. I was tipped off the mailing list. Inferno that uh, this was in fact I should say the Inferno program with Limbo code was in fact somewhat flawed. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Acme, Win. Let's see about, start with CB, checkerboard. I am curious though, I have my copy of Inferno Programming with Limbo next to me. And maybe try to get some context and see where each of these examples comes from. So let me see where CB shows up, if anywhere. I'm not actually sure. I guess there's two directories in here, aren't there? There's the book examples. Let's see, and these are different. I see, I see. So this is just code from Stanley. I suppose and then moves the hop and is no longer up. We can't go to this domain. Not that on Inferno we can go much of anywhere. It's nothing short of a mirror. Sharon even starts here. But we can load post next, so that's pretty cool, I guess. So let's start, let's just see if uh, cb.b starts. Okay, so we have some nice errors to start. I don't think I need this anymore. Uh, checkerboard, implement checkerboard. Guessing it's going to just draw one. Display new image. I'm going to type mismatch except to draw tens. So I'll color out depth of type int. New image, argument type mismatch. So I'll color depth of type. Color L depth, excuse me. Which comes from. So it's initialized to zero, can be set to one or three. Let's see if Sig can find a new image. Doesn't look like it. Oh, wow, okay. Can 
can use the manual for that too. Have to try for that one. There we go. And it does actually, Inferno does actually ship with a manual reader, but the font size is just atrocious and the font itself is kind of and we can change this. This is something we can adjust. Beige? I know. I know, Wacker. It's my favorite color. Beige is my favorite color. It's funny. Um, I think I use this color on like everything now, even at work. My editor at work has this color. And I have a... Uh, actually, we can probably find it in Sharon. I actually have a page on uh, Postnix. I probably know the path by heart with like all the color codes <laughs> including the uh, terminal scheme I use which actually I wonder if I can slot that in to uh, OBS real quick let me see if I can get the terminal overlay no window capture Terminal. Nope. Don't want that. Nope. Okay, that didn't work. It's fine. Got to see Discord briefly. But, uh,. No, yeah, in like weird negative, huh? But yeah, no, it's uh this page, it's uh this one. F F F F E A or that. And post six PW rough colors. I think I can or whatever. Yeah. So argument type mismatch, expect to draw chans. So we see chans, chans of type chans. Whatever a type chans is. It's an ADT. Algebraic data type. And the display ADT has new image, has a method on it. Our rect, a rectangle, and a chance. Wonder if, just to see if this is easy. Hey, MSSX. Slash Apple. And we can probably find, I'm going to guess, we can go in the WM folder. And I'm just going to, do I have G? It used to be a Harvey OS stream. Feels bad, man. <laughs> now, honestly, I would do, I would totally do like a Harvey stream if it wasn't like a, uh, like, I don't know what I would do in Harvey, you know, like, uh, oh, wow, there's a lot of those, huh? Uh, yeah, let's see this a little wider. I do have that, like, one video on YouTube of, like, uh, the cat clock and Harvey totally, like, falling over and shitting the bed. Because the Harvey clock switched to Plan 9 uses what, like a millisecond sleep, and Linux uses second or something crazy like that. And there was a huge amount of clock skew, but that was years ago. Okay, clock.b is a really good starting point um, for like, come on. So the Inferno shell is supposed and I say supposed because it clearly just didn't so these shell windows are supposed to you can like right click and it'll plumb but as we saw 
Oh yeah, some kind of TK error trying to plumb whatever that the hell that means. And now this window is just like dead. I think we can clean it up though. I actually I, I had a blog post recently about uh like a limbo development inferno and one of the big things talked about in there is uh how to kill or more correctly uh find and eliminate uh stray processes. Um and we actually so even if we just killed like WMSH, which I'm like ninety percent sure is the module name for this wm slash sh um because if we were we can run one of these directly by doing this and uh, i think there's some kind of like uh mm, oh that's a lot i i think there's some kind of tool for like inspecting the uh this step maybe that's what i'm thinking of this step wm slash sh Oh, I see. So this step slash this slash wm slash sh maybe no ah whatever. Oh, I see. It's because it probably wants. It's probably not very smart. This step slash this slash wm slash sh dot this. There we go. No, mm, but it does only tell us. Um, like what disk files it relies on. Mm. I can swear there is like a magic tool for this. Doesn't matter. Uh, even if we, my point is, is even if we uh kill every WMSH hi TiVo, um, we have what a fifty fifty chance of killing the one we want. Uh, maybe the log the log doesn't have the uh, PID in it though. We're not quite so lucky, or we just ignore it and we just ignore this really ugly frozen window that we can't get rid of. Oh my goodness, SDF! Hello, I'm so flattered. Ah, there we go. Broke will find it for us because ah. Uh, so this is something that's kind of interesting actually. Uh, so this is Plan Nine does this. Um. Let me recreate what I did a few seconds ago. Hi, hi, STF Pumpkins. It's just so nice to see you. Um, slash Apple WM uh, start up. We're going to do this real quick and I'll reiterate what exactly happened. So we're going to try to break this shell window in the same way we saw before. Clock.be is a good program to read for the purposes of. Uh, like understanding how GUI programs are well on, written on Inferno. And this is true of Plan 9 too, if you just read like, uh, not Cat Clock, but uh, <laughs> cat, lock, cat Clock source is pretty cursed, but the actual just clock source. So we can right click, as in Plan 9, you'd have to like, so we have a middle menu on the middle mouse key. And here that's scroll, cut, paste, narf, send, that's pretty normal. Plan 9's Rio and eight and a half, if you go back to second edition, has the right click menu that's like, uh, I don't know, I guess the way you'd say it is 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 like a, a kind of WM operations and whatnot. And I think it's the middle key has the plumb button, but there's no plumb button here, but we do have a plumber running and we can see its log here. We can see actually the plumb that broke it last time. So I'm guessing I just plumbed clock.b52 or something. Um, so you can right click here and we see, ah, there's no matching plumb rule. It didn't break that time, that's interesting. Um, maybe if we have the full path, sends it to edit and ah we see it showed up oh <laughs> not even um didn't even manage doesn't seem to like the line numbers i think it just needs a better uh plumbing rule and i'm not very good at writing plumbing rules but i bet we just right click there we can see it refreshed over here we see clock clip b open and we can just go to colon 52 here anyways so i guess it doesn't really matter uh so what we're trying to solve here is um Oh, uh, the, the broke thing. Yeah, anyway, so uh, when a process breaks, that is, it like suicides. And just for giggles, um, I'm going to make a program that kills itself here. Or, oh, there's already a misc. Touch 
suicide.b. Um, right click that, opens up here, very nice. Um, and let's actually steal from one of these programs real quick so I can remember how you uh, start a limbo program. So we have some basic boilerplate. We have implement, banner, this is kind of like Pascal if you've ever seen it, if you haven't. That's all I got. Um, it's like this is the language that came before C, or excuse me, before Go, um, after C and all of that. Um, and just explain what's happening here. We have to include things, the module files, .m files are kind of like uh, are kind of like uh, header files in C in that it's like if we right click these, we can see it's like draw module and we see there's like a constant value here indicated by con, that's the path, which is dollar sign draw, whatever that means. This will expand to a path at runtime and this is full of constants and uh, types and ADT definitions, algebraic data type definitions. Um, anyway, so our program. And so we need these two includes. So every program in Limbo is a, every, every Limbo program, I should say, compiles down to this bytecode, which is the VM uh, running underneath here. Wow, this is a big, this is a big file. Um, I'm just gonna jump down uh, to the module definition here. Um, Oh my god, I don't want to do banner. I want to do like, uh, let's say suicide. Um, and we're going to do suicide module. I'm going to write it kind of go style because my muscle memory is uh, permanently damaged from writing so much go over so long. args nil list of string. Uh, and so. I'll, I'll, I'll expand on what we're seeing here in a second. Uh, so every like this blob of bytecode, every program we can say, is kind of a independent program in its own right. Uh, that is, there's no difference between like a library and a shell program, or like a program that doesn't run through the shell. But shell programs are special here, uh, in that they're, the way that you define what is like a runnable program, I suppose, uh, from the shell's perspective, as a shell will be started by like a, I want to say it's like the kernel starts like the first shell or whatever. It doesn't really matter um, from the virtual machine. But uh, the it checks like a function signature, so it looks for a in the disk file it looks for a function in the module, whatever that module is defined by implement. And this is the module definition, as we'd see in like one of these module files. You notice this is the same format. Um, it's just we've moved this definition elsewhere other programs to know uh, like a header file and it looks for this init function and the name of the variables here doesn't matter and we see I named them nil nil means we're not going to use them uh, so it won't be ascribed to a name this is kind of similar to like prolux underscore you could say it's kind of like a similar idea and there is an underscore in limbo if my memory serves and you can use it for like unpacking tuples so if you have like a tuple xy you can do like uh, something like that and uh, drop the side I think I'm not entirely sure uh, but we're gonna suicide this and I think I don't know what a good way to do that is um, to put ourselves in a broken position I guess I could uh, do like a memory violation of some sort so maybe if I make like a channel um, or something. Oh, I know. Uh, so this arg module. Uh, I think if we don't call arg uh, load, so if we include like arg.m and then we don't load, that's just how we comment, and we do arg init um, nil. Uh, this should break our program what's limbo compile it arg is not declared oh yeah so and then these definitions you see up here where i have like a small sys big sys uh small sys is a local variable name and it's in small arg which we see referenced here and big arg is defined in arg.m which is the module name and this is the type the type is module here it's kind of like an adt but special um so we're going to limbo this 
and this runs it through the compiler, but I don't see anything in the errors, so this seems to be fine. We can verify that here. That seems to be fine. We see suicide.dis. And we see module.loaded. Um, and we see 15.60, so if we go all the way up here, we see sh tells us the shell that 1560, wow, I probably butchered that number the first time, suicide uh, is the module, module not loaded. Uh, and it's referring to this arg, which we have not loaded. And so we're gonna go all the way back down here. And we see under PS that there is in suicide, there is a process in the broken state. How do we identify the broken state once? Is this nice, um, it's probably a script at what is broke. What is broke? And this is the broke script. It just runs this monster of a set uh, against slash prog or slash prog is our uh, open processes. And we can just see 1560 is right there. So we can go to cd slash prog slash 1560. And we could do some level of inspection here. Um, using LL, we have like a CTL file, debug CTL, and these would all be defined in the uh, prog manual page, um, which. Uh, is probably really long. Yeah, like 200, page, 200 lines. We can do something like check uh, what file descriptors does it have open. And we see it has dev cons open. This is so it has standard in and standard output. So read is standard input, write is standard output. These are the file descriptor numbers and the file descriptor file in the file for 1560. Read, write, write, standard out, standard error, 0, 1, 2, standard Unix style. Um, this is probably like a buffer for write, if I had to guess, is the size of that. Doesn't matter. Um, but uh, broke also gives us, you notice this is a full command. It says exo, uh, uh, echo kill. And this will clean up the broke process because it leaves it here for debugging. And coming for a strip piece, all of this looks uncanny, right? Yeah, no, it's like very similar, right? And we even use LC for like LS columnized because rather than having like, uh, what in bash is like alias ls equal well you don't you don't get spaces for one this is like a, a plan nine in inferno shell so you can have spaces everywhere but you can do like um you get, yeah everyone has like a alias ls and their bash rc or whatever on like most like bashy linuxes even on like you see it in like uh like free bsd systems i think and they're like oh well ls is an ls ls is ls dash dash uh colors many i don't know uh dash dash columnize dash dash pretty dash 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 v i don't and then they pass on the rest of the arguments or whatever it's like that it's like that shit um but here they just have like a new program ll1 is one i inserted this is uh the purgatorial uh fork let me uh code nine front.org hg purgatorio it's like that or whatever and i've inserted a few utils i use ll might be considered harmful i don't really care i muscle memory it all the time and i like the ex having l l doesn't exist that's fine ls lc ll i'm like very okay with having these especially with lc as the precedent but yeah so we have like the heap we have namespace and the way this is solved in unix and unix like systems is with like a core dump uh, and it's actually, there was someone on Mervai recently on uh, Mastodon, on Mervai.talent, that was like, oh, uh, what's this like core file, da, 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 it looks like garbage. And it's like, oh, it's like a segmentation fault, core dumped. And here we got the equivalent, except in the VM, I mean, obviously we can have segmentation faults, but here it's just the, the shell just whacks us and says, oh, hey, you can't do that and the disk load fails, and that's like an exception that's raised, I'm pretty sure, that's not loaded. Which is cool and good, uh, and, and, and for the record, canonically, the way we'd like, uh, I'm not taking the code from this book uh, too seriously, but like, uh, if you like, or uh, er, like too literally in terms of style, I take it seriously. I'm sure uh, Philip Stanley Marble, or whatever his name is, is a very smart man. Uh, if R is just not equal or is equal to nil, we do like this, and then we do like raise, which is to raise an exception. Um, not load arg or whatever. Um, which actually we can catch like this again. 
Uh, and if we like ran this again, it would catch this and raise this. And but I think also put it in a broken state now that I think about it, right? Thank you, Mr. Shell. The Shell is very kind. The Shell is a benevolent master. Um, and plan nine does this too, for the record, this like freezing these broken processes, like we can cat status file or whatever it's worth. We can cat like the namespace. We can see the namespace the program was running in when it died. Um, I don't think we get like snapshots. Yeah. Uh, plan nine, you can snapshot them, but here on that, I know, uh, actually the inferno program with limbo book, uh, the one that I'm talking about now uh discusses how to like uh play with the prog file system so maybe i can hunt that down later um but like if we see what else do we got um like plan nine does this without the just the shell uh the kernel will freeze and put the slash proc stuff in this frozen state and there's like a snapshot thing all sorts of stuff uh like what's what's you can't read the heap okay that it's probably fine. I think I think there's a way to like uh, write error unknown control message test cat stack. Hmm, we can see the stack. Can't see the heap, but we can see the stack. Let's see what's on the stack. The sh dot dis, and then there was suicide dot dis, and then there was nothing else to load. I suppose. Um, I don't know. Yeah, you can't do anything with text. You see, there's like no permissions listed here. Uh, I think there's like an explicit debug mode you can put all this into where you can like see all this shit. It makes sense, I guess, that, uh, oh, and then the wait. Yeah, if you, I think if you read the wait file, uh, whoever calls it gets like frozen or whatever. So you see, the, we can't do shit. Um, so now if we do broke, uh, we can just pipe this into sh and it'll just run it and we see, ah, did, did I get my shell back? That's what I'm really curious about. I don't think so. Interesting. I don't know how uh, the wait file works. We could probably uh, find out. The read only wait file may be read to recover information about the exiting children of the process. A read of wait will block until the child, until a child of the process created after wait. Ah, da, 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 da. Okay, so Prague tells us. Um, okay. Let's find out. Where is wait? I wish, dude. There's like uh, the Rio window manager in uh, like nine front, especially has some really nice quality of life improvements for like the button menus. And one of them's like look, so you can just like search in this text buffer, and you just can't do that here. So actually, my hack for this. Um, sometimes we, I think we, we start a new plumber in this namespace and I'll do like acne c1 for like one column and I'll read like my man pages in acme because then at least I can do like a what is this prog3 not quite um, man3 prog middle we see it runs it we get the output in the errors menu goodbye um, and then I can come up here and I can be like, wait, click, click, read only, wait file may be read to recover information about the existing children in the process. A read of wait will block until a child of the process created after wait was opened exits. When such a process, when such a child exits, it produces a string with three fields, a PID of the exiting process, a space, module name enclosed with an S colon and possibly empty error message. Error message will contain at most 64 characters. That's I guess what we saw um yeah okay seems good and the reason i spawned a new plumber there is because like if we at least this is what i suspect if we like ooh, okay i guess this isn't a problem in uh in inferno but i know in uh like a uh, nine front for example if you have like two acmes running with the same plumber ahead of them and you right click something in one it shows up in all of them which isn't always desirable anywho uh, so we saw I do that. Um, back to clock and fixing this IPWL code. Um, right. So color L depth starts out as zero. It can be one or three. What does that mean? Next time it's passed in here into out image. 
They just like break this up a little bit. And I don't like this breaking on new land stuff. This doesn't actually help me. I would rather it be like um Oh my god, what's the style? Uh like the the the, B, the one the BSD kernel does or whatever. I don't even remember where you can like where you like just break it up on like every single time you could break it up. Um which is kind of ugly. Um but at least this helps me reason about what's where. Um, and these huge. I, I really like it when you don't. Mouse bad, keyboard good. Um, I mean, yeah, it's like fine. I uh, don't have enough space in my brain for. Uh... Oh, nice. That just compiled. Nice to see that the tokenizer is nice and flexible um, with this format style. Uh, yeah, I I totally get the I, the the stance of like, uh, oh, I, I I have so many keyboard shortcuts that lets me do so much. I feel like that's fine. It's just I don't, um, I just don't. It doesn't work in my brain. My brain doesn't like it when uh, like I don't know, like I, I like I don't, I can't keep keyboard shortcuts in my head. Like I get enough for like control C, control V, and whatnot. I'm talking about the plumbing comment you made a second ago. Joke of, of course, of course, of course. No, but people do talk very seriously about this. I remember this actually. I remember this this new image thing. Um. Oh my God. So we see this draw C map eight. This is uh. Oh man. I wonder if I have the code in this VM. Uh. I ran into this in with bouncing ball. Yeah. 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 Um, this is like the the demo for like Inferno graphics I did a while back where I re-implemented Sean Cairns bouncing ball, bouncing red ball program in Inferno. Um, so let's plumb this in, BB, bouncing ball. Oh, it's GNU LS, you make aliases for it. Yeah, 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 GNU, GNU LS. Um, I hope the latency isn't too bad with this. I don't really know how bad the end stream latency is i baked in like a 10 second delay or something into my stream i hope it's not too much worse i don't know if the gnu ls thing is following up now because you just thought of it or whether the audio just got to you but i sure hope it's not like a oh god um 10 minute delay almost I hope it's not a 10 minute delay it's only 10 seconds that would be pretty funny uh yeah so in this bouncing ball program uh i think i had to use this i wonder if it's under new image too yeah it is and i remember i tried to use like uh because cmap 8 is like 8-bit colors delay isn't bad on my end only a couple of seconds marvelous okay i mean it doesn't really matter i'm not this isn't a call out i'm glad people are talking at all um i just want to make sure as i haven't streamed in actually almost a year on the nose. The last time I streamed was Nine Front trying to re-implement the TIS 100 from uh, the output assembly and failing miserably. But I've learned a lot about parsers since then and I feel like it's something I could do again. CMAP to RGB. Ah, oh, this is also a thing. Maybe someone who's more familiar with like uh, older displays, because you can see such as a CRT and its associated memory. Uh, miles away from the router. <laughs> I am also, I'm actually streaming off of wireless, which is part of my concern, because I can't run a wire to my router from here due to how my current apartment is set up. The router's stuffed in the corner of one of the apartment and I'm stuffed in the other. 9-9-2019, I remember missing it. Yeah, it was around then, yeah, so dangerously close to a year ago. Uh, the recording is on YouTube, MSS, uh, though I, I feel like you probably would have found it, maybe. Uh, I can drop, I'll just drop the link in chat, I might as well, because I'm sure there's people that, uh, there's people that uh, yeah, haven't seen it, um, but my Firefox runs potato with all of this other stuff running. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. But yeah, so basically the idea is, is there's like uh, colors in the calls below, specifies 32 bit integers, Hey, Halfwit, hello. 32-bit uh, RGBA format can take red, green, blue, alpha components as 8-bit values in order for most to least significant byte. 8-bit color 
Component values express illumination ranging from zero to two five five, and alpha component zero is fully transparent. Two five five is fully opaque. Um, ah, yes. Okay, so I YouTube opened and then became unresponsive in uh, my other window. There we go. So let's paste that in. So that was the last broadcast, is what I just put in there. Um, which is like a year ago, and I wish it wasn't a year ago, but I just graduated and so much was going on in my life. Um, and now things are more stable, and I've been locked inside for half a year. All it took was being locked inside for half a year for me to stream again. Uh, red, blue, green, blue, and alpha components. So yeah, so CMAP8 and RGB, so you see CMAP8 is in clock.b, and I remember trying to use CMAP8 when I was doing the bouncing ball demo, and it was breaking in a really weird way, and I don't remember what it was. I don't remember why, but I think I'm supposed to use RGB24. Um, and these are constants provided by the draw library. Uh, so, and I think that means I have to load draw. Yeah, I do. Um, I wonder if he loads draw. Philip Stanley Marvel. He does, okay. I mean, I guess he would have had to. But I, as I recall, the chatter on the Inferno mailing list was talking about how these programs might have been written before the fourth edition release, or certainly maybe right at the right at the fourth edition release. So a lot changed thanks to diligent work by Charles Forsyth. Scythe? Sith? I don't know. Um, where are these defined? I'm sure they're listed somewhere. Um, so it's draw display. I bet I can find. So yeah, she just read an Acme. I don't know why I'm reading my manual pages in anything but Acme. Mm -hmm. uh, end of line, end of line. I can't unhear Sith now, right? Charles Ford Sith. I think I asked you for sponge. It was around that time I was having an odd issue in the proper plan nine to figure out what the USB make me unable to boot ah yes uh yeah i don't yeah i honestly i don't know anything about xhci aci um i don't know like any of that i'm being totally real um i'm like horrendously ignorant um so man to draw display uh grep dash shy c map eight See map eight for eight bit RGB V eight color mapped images. And if we right click, ah, glorious RGB V. That's a broken plum rule. Oh, this just doesn't have. Do they mean RGB? <laughs> Is that a typo? Oh boy, am I gonna commit code today? Nope. What? What is RGB V? Wait, where does this show up in here? All right, fuck this. Um, Acme don't call man to draw display. And we're gonna do map eight. Okay. I don't know why I ever read manual pages in anything but Acme. Uh, the pixel channel structure of an image is determined when the pixel is allocated, including the image. Draw defines a set of constants of type chans for common channel types, gray 1, gray 2, gray 8 for grayscale, depth 1, 2, 8, CMAP 8 for 8 bit, RGBV, man page section 8. In man page section 8, Oh my god, this isn't this isn't nine front. We don't have anything like this. Look, man, RGB V? Man six color. I bet that's it. Uh maybe. Lab serve? Probably not that. Man six color. Color. A British spelling. Representation of pixels and colors. Fascinating. Set map RGBV. 
computes the 256 3 byte entries of the color map. Oh, they give us a cute little color map example. Huh. RGB V map is not gamma corrected. I feel like they really mean this man page, color six. Our group had grayscale value. Yeah. Unless they don't. Hmm. I don't know. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna actually. <laughs> Uh, oh man, I don't have the 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 GitHub cli, or I would uh, I would just uh quickly open a issue ticket against Purgatorio, the because I have a uh, issue tracking on the mirror on GitHub. So I'll put this down as like a issue real quick to verify that color six is in fact the same as what our RGBV is. And if I had to guess, I bet it did just rename. And I bet if I went into my little archive of old Inferno images I've recovered, I bet, I bet I can find a reference to this. Um, missing band page, RGBV eight. As per draw dash display two. And you can't see what I'm typing because I don't have OBS set up to handle Firefox, but that's okay. References. Most likely. Reference. Reference. Most likely means color six. Should be verified. I haven't even fixed any code yet. I'm out for now. Yes. Uh, bye, Halfwit. Take care. Thank you for stopping by. It's always a pleasure. Okay, open to issue 17 or whatever it's that. All right, anyways, uh, all at once is knowledge about this color path. We're gonna use the one from Bouncing Ball because that's the most recent one I wrote that works. And besides, more color, though not strictly better. Um, is probably desirable here. I bet if I just do color L depth only equals this. And then we get rid of it here. And then one and three. I bet I bet it wants it to be like lower depth by default, or you can raise it. So maybe the default should be, oh my goodness, CMAP 8. I don't know. Let's try to build that, see what happens. Cool. What's happening? I didn't read what this program is supposed to do. Though it doesn't come with a readme either, I don't think. Um, okay, well, let's just get rid of that for a second. Maybe it's mad because it's not running out of a, a shell window. Mm, CB-H. What does CB do? They asked. Do, 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 do. What is the usage for this even? In file, out file, box width, box height. Read in the ones and O's input. Does it want some kind of bitmap on the end? Interesting. Um, I bet the readme index actually probably says something about this thing. Turn any text images programs into an image. Works well with banners. See above. Oh, okay. Interesting to call it checkerboard. I guess I could have just read what that said. So what, does it just go until end of file? Guess. 
What does L do? C and we got L. C updates depth and L does log riff. Some kind of log stuff. Box color because logarithmic. What? It's totally kind of uncommented code. Not totally, but okay, well, it takes any text it says. Just give it a bunch of stuff. Control D. Oh! Ah, okay, so I'll put it in GIF. So, oh, sweet Jesus, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch up his art code here. Cause this is, this is gross. I don't like this. Um, why doesn't star equals, oh, cause H. Ugh, he stole H. He uses H. Uh, int arg. Also, you should use E arg. Um, because E arg uh, will throw a usage error if you're missing something and arg won't. Uh, and I think I do that in bouncing ball. You can steal that. Yeah, so you got ERG, ARG, ERG. So you take all ARGs become ERGs. I think at one point I went through a bunch of the Purgatorio source and changed every ARG into an ERG or did something like that. I know I added usage of the ARG module to a bunch of stuff um, that rolled its own. There's also, uh, you can do ARG set usage usage um oh no you have to we're gonna steal his usage string use capital u usage must be a unix user um bye set usage boop oh that's not that's not what I wanted at all. Come on now. I didn't realize that backspace highlighting that was enough to uh, copy it. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> that usage. Okay, fine. And then you do our usage, our usage. Now we get rid of you. No more. Nick to mail. Um. Set usage, img init, separate those, those are different things. Pet peeve. This also isn't aligned. I wonder what font he used where this aligned. Clearly not size 9 Pelm. Great, lovely. Um, so we have i, we have o, w, h, and then we call usage, and now it should er every time we do anything wrong. So if I do cb.b, good, cb-q doesn't exist. We get a real usage, very nice. Don't need that new line. Press the limbo button, it recompiles. Oh my god, it, it doesn't need the usage text either. Glorious. It's actually really handy when you think about it. So we do cb-q and we see this, excellent. So I'm going to do, what if we made the CB program an image? So CB dot, so we call CB dash I CB dot B dash O CB dot GIF. Oh, it says it outputs it as a GIF file or whatever. Uh, yeah, nice. Um, I don't actually know <laughs> how to view a GIF file. Um, Er, excuse me. Yes. Maybe if I right click, it'll just magically. I don't know if there is an image view. I mean, there is an image view. I know there's an image view. There's the ah, uh, there's the one that they use for the uh, ah wm slash view. Yeah. Okay. 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 I just know there's some things like a, I think it's like an MPEG encoder or something for Inferno, but there's no like player decoder, which is kind of silly. CB.gif. Oh. Oh, yeah, I guess it did make it an image. Oh man, try opening it in a modern browser, right? Um, 
Oh man. Okay. So it's the it literally just took like a zoomed out high level view of the source code and made it into an image. Interesting. Interesting. I wonder if box with the box height are in pixels. I don't know. What happens if I change the color depth? So what if I do so we're gonna do limbo C B no C B dash I C B dot B dash O C B dot GIF and then increase the color depth and then I don't know, see what that does. So WSH view C B dot GIF. Didn't seem to change anything substantial. Okay. Um, but what if we do the logarithm thing? I don't know. I don't know what that what that's supposed to be. Um, send and doesn't look like it changed anything. Not significantly, at least. Uh, I guess the next logical step is uh, so we have what uh, dash h and dash w. It's to manually at least set width, I guess. Uh, so dash w. I don't know, what are we, like 800, uh, dash height, 600, I don't know, oops, 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 oh yeah, if you right click it, it just, did it open, oh, I thought it did something, oh, whatever, dereference of nil, duh, duh, oh yeah, I think there's a debugger too, somewhere in here, like system, debugger, hey, file, open, Oh my god. <laughs> uh prog twenty three oh three says. Do, 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 do. Oh. Uh oh god. I lost an acme. Oh wait, no, it just shrank. That acme. Oh, everything's falling apart. We have that acme. Is the background something is broken? Ah, oh, something is broken horribly. Broke. Ah, oh, it's not worth it. I don't. I don't. I don't need to know. Oh God. Oh Jesus. All right. We don't need you. Um. Remember when there was a debugger here? Oh yeah, there it is. Um. Yeah. If there wasn't you. What if we just didn't? Ah. I don't need the stack. Uh, goodbye. Can I have my background back? Doesn't seem that way. I bet it, the Rio hack doesn't work where if I just expand the window, it'll redraw for everything. Yeah, it doesn't seem that way. It looks like the background is just permanently corrupted to be confusing. Amazing. I guess I could just restart Inferno, but uh, that seems like an awful lot of work. This is really annoying. Anyhow, um, I wonder how, I don't think we have Acid on here, so I'm not sure exactly how to get a stack trace. I remember figuring it out like once. Um, so just for giggles, let's send that again. And then, Check the one section. Deb? What is deb? Oh, is that going to be like acid? That would be kind of nice. Stack? Okay, hold on. I need the lake. And one stack. What does stack do? Stack trace? Stack trace. Ah. Ah ha 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 ha. 2337. Aha. Oh, but I don't want. What does this V do? Oh, the stack is just also just has totally the wrong stack trace provided by decoding the stack trace will contain the different values, the arguments, and variables. The output is most useful when it's compiled with the dash G to produce a symbol file. Oh, we have that. Um, built in list of associated between disk directories. Um, show source line information with each item. Yes. Please. Uh. So wait, where am I? I need to be in 
It probably wants me to be in the directory that the the stack twenty three three seven. Ah, aha! Now wait, did we have line number before? No, we didn't. It just quietly loaded it. Stack B twenty three three seven. Oh, 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 god. Oh my god, what is that? Oh, oh my god, is it showing me? everything with the value in it stack stack value oh sweet jesus yes it is oh wow okay um wow wow that's really nice though in its own way um huh. um okay well, that's not really what I wanted, but uh, stack was what I wanted. I didn't. I, I. I don't think I've really seen something like this. That was this sheet before. This is a really nice tool. And you get this nice heading. Can I just uh, plumb that? Doesn't seem that way. Hmm. Thinking. Thinking. One moment. Okay. Well, with this out of the way. Okay. Also, there's no control B. Uh, Plan 9's Rio has this really nice keyboard shortcut, uh, control B, that jumps you down to the cursor line every time you want to do this. So stack. Two three uh, two two three seven. Not leak. Not leak. The, the opposite. Um, it won't let me plumb that. Is I think I would need to do like this. It probably wants the full path. So the plumber is not very clever, or it just oh, or it's been doing it the whole time, and I'm just like not very smart. Um. Because Acme wasn't actually open and I was watching the imaginary background Acme. Oh my god. Okay, what is deb though? I didn't. Oh, that's the WM debugger, huh? Okay. What's tiny? Are you? Oh, that's like the other shell. Okay, okay, okay. I guess dub and stack are the tools of the trade. Stack is good enough. I'm very, very okay with stack. Um, oh, funny. We, it opens it like this with this in the file name, but we can right click it and plumbs it to the right place. It's a little silly. Um. Out image draw. Oh, it doesn't use it here. It's like a nil, but it needs the uh, draw C map thing. Can we just use, we just use color L depth? I think. Wait, wait. Oh, wait. Shit. No. Um. Oh, I'm like totally misreading this. This is draw. I use draw here. I use draw on this one somewhere. Mm, nil is kosher there. Out image. I guess it's maybe a little out of scope to uh, make sure his code works perfectly because we got it compiling. That's kind of just my goal. And I'll make a repository on my own page rather than the archive for that. Color L depth zero color factor. This is seriously a Plan 9 2020 boot camp. Uh, yeah, Pubnix, uh, I suppose so. I mean, you can transliterate a lot of what's happening here over to Plan 9 pretty transparently. The thing about, I'm just going to presume, because I know y'all run the Plan 9 2020 boot camp, and I really appreciate that. I didn't participate this last cycle, and we'll see if I do this uh, next one, because I, I, I like that that exists. I really, really do. Um... I'm happy to support it however I can. Uh, but uh, no, this is a bootcamp. <laughs> um, thank you. 
Thank you. I'm doing my best. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the goal, right? Like, there's only so much content that we have um, for, like, Plan 9 and even Inferno. I mean, Inferno and Planet, they're very, very, very different. Very, very different systems. Very, very different implementations. But at the high level, the idea is, like, the same. It's, like, very similar. Yeah, their goals are different, and the way they're implemented is different. Every Like, a Theseus is ship of everything is different, but... Um, spiritually they are very similar actually on the uh on, on my blog uh i compare and i'll link a shameless self-promotion because that's what i do on here um this will cross-reference limbo and plan 9c and uh go uh, a lot and yeah if anyone hasn't seen that that will uh, i think illustrate very heavily how like similar limbo is and the interfaces are very similar we have a dev draw on um on Inferno, we have slash dev just like we would on like plan nine. And a lot of the same techniques uh, still work. Uh, like we can cap dev drivers and we see all of the devices. We see all the devices that are loaded. We see their aliases. We can interact with them like the same way. There's even a serve device. I don't think serve even does. I think it does something different. Than it does on uh, plan nine because uh, serve on plan nine is kind of messy directory to service conventionally bound for yeah yeah they, they use slash chance let's just serve and it's slightly different i think doesn't matter it doesn't matter doesn't matter um but like cosmetically um they're kind of similar like we have def draw and we can like cast with dev slash draw slash and I mean, we're not using it right, but uh, you get the idea. Draw slash new. Um, ls slash dev slash draw slash one. And so forth. Um, dev draw one color map, maybe. Oh, well, I tried. Uh, but yeah, I really, I really hate this, like, background acme. I don't, I don't know how to fix that. Uh, I, I've had it happen before. It's, uh... Oh god, I think it because it's like a no point to reference that happened, and I strongly suspect that it is some kind of memory corruption uh thing that ends up. I mean, I think that's why it happens in like Windows XP, like the really old one. It's like when it when why they had like a uh, buffer issues in like the GUI for like XP or whatever in like that era of like GUIs. Um, is when it's all like one big buffer and something naughty happens, and that's why it draws all over the place or something something stupid like that. I don't even know. Um, anywho, so we have a. Oh god, I, I closed all of my windows. Um I think actually we should do So this is a technique you can use on plan nine too. Um just with that tooling. So do we have a well if <laughs> if it'll uh here we go. Uh, if there's a command to start the shell in the parent namespace, is in uh, Rio what you do is you do uh, window dash m. That's not a thing here. I think it might just work because in, I, in general the namespacey stuff seems to work just better in Inferno. Yeah, yeah, we just get the parent namespace. Oh, and it looks like it thinks we're in the parent window width too. I don't even know what that's all about. Um, oh, wow, that's disgusting um limbo cb.b but like uh in rio when you like open when you call window from some parent program it kind of goes out of your namespace up to rio rio opens a window and i think you have to explicitly do like when you have to do explicitly window dash m and that'll load like the parent namespace into the child window namespace or something like that um so we did what cb dash i cb dot b um dash o cb dot gif and then we did like dash with, let's just do dash with 12. Why did that plumb something? What? That's strange. Oh, maybe it tries to open the GIF over here. Shrink you down a little bit. Well, uh, right click cb.gif, no such dice, cb.gif. Ah, 
Oh, you see the width adjust just fine. Let me do cb dash i cb dot b dash r cb dot gif. I really should just be editing it in line, but whatever. So let's do like 800. And then do this, send, go. Hmm. Is that wider? I, I honestly can't tell if that's wider. 8,009. I bet it hits a max. Yeah. So you seem to have hit some kind of max. We'll just leave it at 800. So what if we do dash i, dash height, like 800? Oh, height seems to be slightly more expensive on time. Oh, data over. Oh, <laughs> uh, no such limit appears here. Oh, interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Oh, God. Um, there we go. Do you have any broken processes? Oh, okay. That's good. All right, all right, all right. Is it like a scalar then? Is that what height is? Am I understanding this correctly? I really, I, I just didn't read the, uh... Oh uh, yeah, it looks like it is just a scalar. Huh. So, oh God. calm down, plumber. Like, chattering a... So, so let's do two and two. What if we do both? That send yeah there you go. oh oh it's like thicker you see it's not it doesn't make it a bigger picture but it makes the lines thicker so 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 um let me let me get rid let, let me like do this one to one oh god and we'll do it side by side and I'll give it a new name how about that. So cb2.gif, will this open me two WM view windows? I hope so. Yes, it does. So, oh, wow. It's just, oh, wait. Mm, oh, I see, I see, I see. Well, okay, so cb2 is the one without the scalar, and cb is the one with the scalar. Uh, it's just bigger. It's like two times the size, roughly. Okay, okay, so then if we do... Let's keep CB2 as the control, um, because I because reasons. Uh, even if it's a little backwards, let's do like four.
Try that again. Can you hear me? I'm just waiting the 10 seconds or whatever and hope somebody messages me in time. Well, while we wait, uh, I'm gonna go get more water, one second. Oh, good, thank you. Okay, works. Thank you, thank you, uh, PubMix and everyone else, uh, and TiVo. Okay, so uh, next step, uh, CB.B works. Uh, Banner is going to be the next one because it mentioned in README over here for CB, uh, turns any text images program, blah, 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 into an image works well with Banner. See above. Uh, banner is a semi clone of the Unix banner, works well with CB. Ah, in Unix banner, um, wow, do I even have that on this machine? I doubt it. I do not. Oh, uh, I am running Ubuntu of all things, and it's like sudo apt install sysv banner, just for giggles. Um, let me just install this real quick. It probably like, oh, like how many how many bytes is it? How many bytes is it? Seven thousand bytes. Oh. Nice. Do, 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 do. For the whole package. Probably not just for the binary. The binary is much smaller. And then I'll demo it from inside Inferno. And then we'll use that, I guess, as our reference point if he claims that it's supposed to be similar. One day. Apt will finish installing. Ah, there we go. Banner. Banner for. All right. Okay. So this is something we use to make ASCII art. Um. So OS, uh, OS command, and this is actually true on uh, Ninefront now with the Ninefront draw term exposed as a command interface to the host system. But we can do OS banner, and we see nothing come out. Well, what is that? I say, uh, hello. I wonder if it, I doubt, I doubt it's Unicode aware, but we'll, we'll see. And then he crashed it. Um, oh, I see, it just drops it. Nice. I see, hello, in big letters. Nice, 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 nice. Um, cool, very nice. Uh, oh my god. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Hello, and first off, does this compile? Oh, this one just works. Oh, that's nice. Um, oh, the background thing disappeared. What? Oh, I guess we... Oh, wait. Now it's over here? What? I will never understand. Uh, banner. Boo bar. Well, that's strange. All right, banner dash h, boo bar hello world. Is this how this works outside of Acme? What is happening? Maybe it does something like curse. Uh, banner dash h, banner hello. What? I don't understand. Banner dash B. I don't know what dash B does, but hello. What? Well, so it compiles, but I don't know. It's a Chinese. It maps. Those look like a lot like bitmaps. Oh dear. Oh god. Okay. That it tries to print on like the intersection on these ones. Wow, this kind of hurts my eyes to look at. Why is an asterisk? Oh, oh, this is for anything else. Anything it doesn't know. Oh, interesting. Oh, it knows curly braces. Wait, why doesn't it know? 
banner. What? What? Why does it recognize curly braces? Is the shell eating things in a weird way? Oh, this is interesting. This is so interesting. Like I need like a big. Oh man, I I keep forgetting. I can just do this. Um. Do banner. Hello. That doesn't work. We do banner UV. That doesn't work. Banner da da. That works. Banner da 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 da. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. Now, what horrible algorithm is this doing? Like, run out of memory or something crazy? Um. Bitmap int zero. Oh, if it's a bitmap. Oh, to output a bitmap. Oh, I see. Um. <laughs> Once again, uh, I'm going to co-opt the usage library a little bit. We're going to our set usage. Enter B strings, and we're gonna do our usage. This is mostly cosmetic, but it makes me happy to know that we all use the same thing around here. Um, so word while R X is not equal to nil, so it's gonna go through each word. Oh my lord, broke. Uh, slay kill. Kill, 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 banner, yes. What is banner's module name? Banner. Interesting. Well, we'll just get rid of you. That'll be that. Um, Wonderful. So it's going to go through each word. So banner, hello, the H, E. And it looks like it's trying to do something. It's very interesting. Uh, so we're going to do four words. So while R is not equal nil, nil is, so, so R is a list of string. And we see they initialize it after arg is done with the bullshit. Um, it's probably waiting for matching curly braces. Uh, Ori B says, uh, tell Hennessy's pro that it's probably waiting for matching braces. Refuses to get a Twitch account. That's fine. Um, oh, I wonder if I have IRCFS on here and I could just connect to like the nine fans chat. Uh, uh da, da, da. I think there's a way to connect to Twitch chats from IRC or something like that. What is this? Infrared remote control? Mm, I don't think that's what I want. Um no, whatever. Probably for matching braces. I don't know about that. Um like yes, banner dot dot dot. Oh, I see. Oh, maybe if like the shell is expecting it, the banner doesn't care. Yeah, that's so weird. Oh, it writes. Wait, what? A B. Twitch FS. Yeah, I wish. 
This is such a strange program. It feels like it's something that's like really simple. So I bet this is gonna like mess with my head a little bit. Um, when it actually works, I'm um, okay. 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 This is like some fizzbuzz shit. Um, but like thrown on its head. <sighs> Word is the head of args. Seems good. Let's separate that just for clarity. For Isis here, Isis and. 12, which I guess is this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Sure, okay. So this is, I'm gonna be a jerk here actually and rename these to like y and x just so I have to, I, I, can't, I can't get mixed up here. Um, and then we come in here, we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do this, and make this a little more legible. Um, by the way, Ori, if you ping me on IRC, my phone buzzes, and I'll actually see it. I just don't have, uh, I guess I can have uh, IRC pulled up in the corner. Um, I just don't have it by default. Hmm. In Ori, yes, I do know that it's set to uh, mature audiences. This is so uh, I don't get attacked for having like mature language or something silly like that. Okay, I've tucked away Discord into the corner, so I'll at least see messages into the Nine Fans Discord. All right, from uh, the stream machine. Where was I? Oh yes, uh, why I mystery character there. I don't know how that got there. I probably typed it. Mm. What is this N here? What is happening here? Why is this in 12? For N. What? Wait, this already feels wrong. Something about this already feels wrong. Wait, hold on. Why? Why is this in 12? These are I'm gonna note actually um, eight by twelve bitmaps. Um, y and so we have I and J. This is clearly X. J is clearly intended to be X. I feel like whatever I, uh, is about to click in my head, I'm really gonna dislike. Um, this looks right. Y into X. That looks right. That looks fine. Seems kosher. Why is this print on a different line? The world may never know. Um, and so look at the order it prints the braces. Wait, that looks right. So where do they come in? Um, I, I, I'm wondering if it's not matching the word correctly. N is less than length of word. N plus plus. I feel like N, because bitmaps is the name of this thing up here. So why aren't we looking up, is this the order on the ASCII table? Hold on. Oh, wow, that looks terrible. Um, Zero, one, where is, exclamation, double quote, pound. Yeah, this is the order of the ASCII table with zero being rooted at, oh, this is all wrong, this is all wrong. Everything about this is wrong. I think I know what ends. N, N needs to be the index in the bitmaps. Then, hey, hamsters, nice to see you. I wasn't sure if you're gonna make it tonight. Um, okay, okay. I is getting rid of this this n garbage. Um, I'm gonna be a little bold here, and I'm gonna say n is going to be. Um. Oh, because oh Jesus. Okay, wait. N is. Okay, wait. Hold on. N, no, no, no. N is the letter. N is the letter. Um, oh dear, this is a rough time to wake up. 
it's uh, quite the time. Okay, N is the letter. N, so, okay. I don't know why, why is Y free? Okay, so we need to print from the top, I guess. Oh, wait, I see, I see. Oh, I see what you mean by the order it prints the braces, because it has to print the top of the braces first. I can't just print, like, one whole character. Right, right, because it needs to line print it, it needs to line print it. Oh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. No, this is all right then, I think. Okay, 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 okay. Um, Got it. Um, N N is less than len word. Yeah, that seems fine. Uh, I don't really like that's N, but I don't have a better name for it. So sure, let's make sure this still compiles, and I haven't done something horrible to it. I mean, this still does. Yeah. Okay. So that still works. Braces work. Braces are at the end. Does tilde work? Interesting. But A doesn't work. What's the threshold here? Hold on. Does Y work? Is it just ASCII that doesn't work? Y doesn't work. Z doesn't work. Curly brace works. Oh! Oh! There's zero doubt! He doesn't have anything! Oh, what the shit? What? Why? Why? Okay, time to do some ASCII art. Oh, wait, some of these are here. Capitals are here. Oh! Oh my god. I shouldn't have doubted Philip. He's right all along. Huh. Would it really be so bad? Do I want to waste time doing this ASCII art? How many of these that are... What good is a banner? What good... What's good a banner that's not shouting? That's fair, that's fair. Shouting is like the the optimal mode for like a banner program. Okay, okay. So we do like OS banner foo. And we get barely foo. OS banner foo. Banner foo. Banner foo. Nice. OS banner foo. That works. OS banner foo. Interesting. It's also interesting to me to upper n. Yeah, I can just do that, I guess. It's just a little unfortunate. There is a two upper somewhere. Um, it's mostly that I'm just disappointed. Um, man, two string. All right. No, I'm just disappointed, I guess. Also, he does this thing, and I don't like this thing. I did this thing when I first started writing Limbo, and then I decided I didn't like this thing. Uh, this thing where you, like, blockify all of these, but imports are, like, kind of special, and they don't really fit in with the rest of the global variable namespace, I think. Um, oh, yeah, you're getting a kick out of this, maybe. Um, so the string library on here you actually have a type string so you can't just do the normal pattern for imports is <laughs> you can't do what is it string.m yeah um and you see the name they recommend is stir um which like okay um so you're gonna do stir stir uh let's jump to where we do all of our loads. Load string. And then of course, um, though the the load is you can see string string capitals though. Um, to upper. And we can do it on the whole string. That is actually kind of nice. We can just do um he doesn't test it doesn't test for nil here which uh, like seems to be something that you do but the shell catches it as an exception so i feel like it's kind of redundant to raise an exception if you can't load it, it just tells you which thing 
didn't load. It saves you like two seconds in the rare event you're not loading. I've only had it happen once. It's when I broke the ARG module while I was like refactoring it a little bit a while ago. And it didn't rebuild and reinstall, but it like I, I missed that that happened. And so then like it didn't load and I, I got the very spooky elusive ARG didn't load message. And I wasn't really emotionally prepared for that. Um, right. So all the way down here then where we get word out we're gonna do stir to upper hd args now yeah. this seems good oh i'm very intelligent uh, index Acme problems. Banner foo. Ah! Except it looks weird in Acme. Uh, banner foo. Nah. OS banner foo. Nah. Banner foo. OS banner foo. Come on. You can do it. Yeah. And they're the same. So now we're going to take the author's advice and we're going to do banner hi ori. Uh, thanks for the tips, smiley face. Except I don't know if that'll actually translate. But oh dear. Um, nope, I don't put the quote there. I did not quote there. The quote here. The quote there. Um, we feed this into CB dash H two dash W two. I don't know what I expected. Uh, cb dot or or dot gif. Wm slash view or dot gif. Well, <laughs> huh? Um. So just to make sure that this actually puts out sane output, certainly does something. Oh god. Uh it's trying. I think that's okay, let's <laughs> Okay, that's a bit better. Um H four dash W four. Uh C B dot give. Well, he says it's really good with it, but I'm kind of skeptical about this. Um, this could be user error, but this feels a little, uh, a little silly. It's so small. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it certainly does something. So I'll call banner done. Very nice. Hmm. What's next? What in the README doesn't involve enlightenment? As you see, there's like enlightenment sound demon, but I have actually no way of testing this, so I don't even really want to do it because I don't have E17 installed. I mean, maybe they just work. Let's uh, see real quick. ESD dot B. Oh. Okay. Well, we'll at least get them to compile, even if I don't know if they work. Ah, so this is a sysrays, and this doesn't exist. Um, that's old Inferno. I don't know how old, but um, this shouldn't return anything, by the way. There should be no function signature for the function raise. Excuse me. And yes, two upper end would have worked too. Or I just. Uh, I felt uh, to uppering the word was going to be easier uh, with the string interface we had. Okay, so yeah, there's no raise. Anyways, raise is just a, a a keyword, and it's called in a really weird way. Like you do like just raise space. It's not called like a real function. It just needs a string to be here. Um, it's just very like odd, honestly. Um, it kind of breaks convention. I really hate when they don't specify it's an error. 
Um, let's just try that again. Oh god. Come on. All oh, right, there are two raises. And raise is like useful. It's just um, oh, here's a nice example of string concatenation just being a thing. And not reference format dot reference rate not referenced seems good. ESD dash Q. Yes, is oh, and he has this new line usage, which is bike shedding time. Why are there two new lines? Oh man, I why is it, it's on standard out to why this shouldn't okay hold on we <laughs> do uh quality of life updates here um arg handling and like inferno as a whole it's like you talk about see he raised oh yeah the thing we taught here earlier is he raises for like nil on arg and math but not for like us. Oh, same thing happened again. Oh my god. Okay, well, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. ESD. It's just dash P. Or, okay. This is not declared. That's fine. It's that. Uh, you can get around that by uh, that. Uh, I shouldn't have started that. I'm gonna start with a network listener. Um, but uh, well, okay, what's the module name on this? ESD, ESD, kill ESD. Thank you. Um, but if we do ESD dash H, oh, and he doesn't use ER. There we use ER. Cat saying hello. She probably wants fed. I doubt you can hear her though. Hope you can. She's being pretty quiet. Um, it's about her dinner time. Maybe in like another hour. Anywho, um, okay. So ESD works. I guess I'm just doing the ESD stuff now. Um, limbo ESD audio dev dot b. Almost to the point where I might be worth it to write a edit line for this, but I think that'd be a really gross rejects for something that we can just, you know, click through and do. Let's refactor this. Glorious. Is the audio dev H. Sure. Does he even take arguments? Does he have his own usage? Yes, he does. Udsage. Hmm, I remember reading somewhere about Pulsar I have an ESD sync module. Might be useful for testing that. Hmm, that is, that would be interesting. That might exist. I think that is out of scope for this uh, sitting, but that is good to know. Um, that Pulse has, um, might have something like that. I would search around in Firefox, but I don't think my desktop would survive. Because I'm doing all of this off of like an Intel and UC over Wi-Fi, and you can imagine the kind of suffering that running OBS and what, however many browsers it takes to screw in a light bulb on uh, Linux does. Anyways, uh, well, let's just scrape out the useful bits uh, from this and get rid of all of this ugly arg handling. Jump up here, our set usage. Because if the standard library gives us a facility for handling usage, why wouldn't we use it? Um, Ori, I will say I was I I was really fascinated when I saw how you handled like the command line flight handler for Murden. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, oh, I should just link to that too. Um, so I think it's a really interesting little language that you made there. Uh, the the like big pattern matching flag thing uh, that you give for Murden here. Let me link the site so even if Mori's not here, people can go peek at it. 
Um, yeah. Don't need that exit anymore, that's redundant. Don't need this usage anymore, that's redundant. Glorious. the audio dev dash h. And I bet we need some ERGs. There we go. Cool. Is the audio dev dash h, and we get uses message. Very nice. One more down. Oh, a port scanner. I don't know how I missed this the first time. This is something I actually kind of want. Up to 65535, that looks right. Let's try to build it. Er? Module RFC 1700.m does not exist. Uh, did it ever? That's very oddly specific. What do you need from it? Maybe we can just give it to it. Limbo port scanner dot b just works. What did you use this for? What was the purpose? Why? Why? What? What? That's not in this file tree anywhere, is it? EU J grep dash I RFC seventeen hundred. No. Hold on. It's not like thing, right? No way. No way. Anyways, moving on with life while well, that runs forever. Um it's probably in the slash module directory if anywhere, but it's, it's like a flat directory, so who knows. We'll leave these raises here, separate argonet once again into the breach. Making command line handling more appreciable. It is interesting in the he blocks he I, I don't know he, let me back up a little bit. Do you see how he kind of puts these two things in a block? He has a curly base block. I'm wondering if this is a quirk of old Inferno. Is modern Inferno, you can just do this. Uh, you don't need the curly brace block to tell you. It just the Inferno just knows. But I noticed um, actually in all places when I was learning Rust, that Rust, when you have a match block like this, needs you to have curly braces. If you have more than one statement, you use commas rather than semicolons. And I feel like I've seen that before. Maybe in Murden, maybe in ML, or some other ML. Maybe that's an MLism. I don't know. Um, anyways. Uh, interesting, 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 interesting. Uh, port scanner. Come back to set usage. Limbo. Doink, doink, doink. Doink, 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 doink. Nice. So, port scanner dash h, port scanner dash b. Let's make this easy for it. Uh, dash e, 90. Hosting.pw. That okay. Well, it should have found. <laughs> it should have found uh, port eighty open. But uh, all right. Uh, begin one and six five three five delay ten. Uh, strips out the arguments. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh God. I tapped out and uh, got lost in uh, the GNOME, whatever this is. I don't run this desktop enough to really care. Um, host name, it was first arg. That's probably correct. Wait, no, it's supposed to be 
you have to do args equals arg args Is that it arg v v arg v arg v but that's it uh that that reference of nil the uh uh wait rx equals r oh god oh it does it right there oh jesus christ um i i was literally looking at that and i didn't get it um wow sleep deprivation is kicking in host name hd args Spawn TCP scan begin and delay host name. Why does it need to spawn that? I don't think that needs to be asynchronous. In fact, I don't think it's helpful if that's asynchronous. And return not exit that is kind of interesting, but I don't think we need that. Like, am I crazy? Better not be sleeping for 10 seconds between each port. That'd be kind of crazy. Um, Sysleep. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> period in for a period of milliseconds. All right. Seems good. Uh, dial adder. Uh, oh wow! He, like makes his own dial string. String i. I guess that makes sense because you're scan scanning TCP ports. Oh, TCP scans by but it's so that uh, they he had plans to make it like scan multiple protocols at once, maybe asynchronously. Very interesting. Um, but he's not doing that. So why is it uh? Sleeping for this long. Post next shouldn't be down. In fact, uh, get this. Get this. Turn that post stop pw eighty. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, there it is. Or er, not post next. Post next dot us. Very strange. That must be really old config to say that that domain changed a long time ago well that seems to be done where are we so or oh, port scanner dot b port scanner uh, dash b 70 dash e Let's just do this. 79-E81. Post next stop BW. Uh, why does it reset adder? It should just like not do that, I think. But whatever. Okay, it's negative one. Okay, it's greater than zero. Interesting. Style. The way it's hanging. Does it have to do with the threading? That'd be interesting. Like if we put this. Oh, What's your module name? In case. I, mean, I could run it through the profiler and it would tell me. I don't really know how to do that. And of course that exits instantly. They use return.
I'm still not convinced that's correct. Since forever. Interesting. What if we just get rid of the sleep? It shouldn't be that. I didn't delay not reference, that's fine. Clearly not that. Sys dial maybe? Do, 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 do. Oh boy. Dial. It's like to actual network address. Have the uh, bounds to an. Da, 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 da. I do remember the result will be path name of a line. Interesting. Gives us a file descriptor. Is that what that is? The destination to a multi person network, announce and listen, the compliments of dial. Sure. Huh. Very interesting. I wonder if it's supposed to be net. <laughs> less than end. I think that's supposed to be less than equals end. That's how I'd interpret it. Plus plus string i. Does that do what I think it does? Sys print adder. Ugh. Ugly, but we don't get the cute little quote operator. Oh, hey. Oh, that showed up. It's very late. Oh, hey. Oh. Why is it so slow? Like a TCP timeout thing. I feel like we could, uh, Nicely reorchestrate this. I wonder if I should rewrite this to just use channels. I bet it's doing hitting TCP timeouts for these connections. <sighs> Every time I try to open one of these ports. That's something like that. Actually, almost definitely. So it should probably just throw down ports down the channel until the last. Until it doesn't. Then you don't really know. I guess you could have a done, have a done channel or something. Because each one would need to return, you could have it return a pair of found or not found, and you could just run a separate spawn for each port. Or found or not found, I mean. So found is true or false, and then its value, I suppose. Uh, which this could be solved with like union types, tagged unions, but whatever. Um, so we rewrite this. Wow, that's a big timeout. I bet that's what that is. Um, okay, 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 okay. Um, so we're just going to partially rewrite this, I think. And we do want to spawn this, actually, I think, no? Oh, wow, time to remember how to do... I have Limbo by example cloned on here, because I think I'm going to need it. Um... What are you? Get out of here. Get out of here. So to get around this timeout, which I don't know. 
Was there? Is there anything for this? There's probably a way to adjust that timeout, but we're just gonna not, because I don't know how. So where are we? All right. OS git clone https github.com slash Hennessy slash limbo by example. Because this is super useful actually. And uh, you know, just for giggles, let's throw this in here. Alright. So going in here. C D channels. No. C D select. Uh, I guess that's just channels, probably. All right. Eh, eh, eh. All right. All right. All right. All right. So what we're gonna do? What we're gonna do is we're gonna rewrite this so that every every TCP scan, um. Every port will get CVC found, VC found, VC found. Um, okay, 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 okay. Uh, so I, <laughs> every time we get a port, we throw it into its own spawn, its own coroutine, and that will eat up whatever delays asynchronously, and maybe we'll hit some kind of limit of outgoing connections. Who knows? That's for later us to find out. And then we have each one push back right back down a channel and we just uh every time we find something on the channel we print it and, it and then every time we get anything found or not we tick up a ticker and that's gonna be the total number of ports that we're scanning uh, multiplied by the number of protocols uh in this case the scaler for the port count is going to be one because we're just doing tcp but we could uh, expand this to the udp as well but that's out of scope i think so, all of that being said, let's channel. So, chan of a begin and delay. We can, we don't need to respect delay because we're gonna, I guess we could do delay and like dispatch. So, TCP scan going to be dispatch routines processes they're called processes in inferno processes to connect points and then my cat's going to pick something she's not supposed to um we're going to do See, begin and end, these are basically constant, so I think these could be global, but I guess they don't have to be. Um, I wonder if I can make these channels global. I guess I just won't, just to be nice. Um, and we'll do... What should we call it? Um, port chan. <laughs> Chan of we're gonna make it of a tuple int string I guess mm, yeah and we'll actually just have it send down the whole dial string I think and there is a way to do a closure here, I think, but I, the syntax is kind of escaping me. I mean, get rid of that camel case. Port chan. Port chan, chan of int string. It's kosher? Great. I'm gonna take this logic. We're gonna scrape it all out. Spawn, scan, ECP, I. 
I guess we could do adder calculations here. I guess that makes sense. Mm, yes, that does make sense. This will be the dial string. God, I hate that this is just out here. We're just going to do um, this. And then we're going to take this. And we're going to do scan a port. And this could be scan. And we're going to do port chan chan of int string. Okay, we're going to do adder string. This doesn't return anything. And then dent this block. Okay is not declared, that's fine. I is not declared. Bound. This is gonna be for chan equals right adder. We're gonna do um or found one port chan uh, else zero nil. I think this is right. Hmm, not quite. I have this flipped. Never quite keep that straight in the not go world. Er, whoa, what did I write here? Wow. Um, wow, that's kind of wacky. You can tell I'm tired. Wild, wild, wild. That's fine. Nice. Let's put nothing in that case. Um, then This is fine, this is fine, this is how we write into port chan. Seems good. And then four, and then we're gonna alt. Alt so we can alternate over multiple channels. Um, we do it like over here. Do okay. Um, adder. Just uh. We don't hog the CPU. So we're gonna do print open. Uh, plus adder. And percent s adder. There we go. I uh, will do that if okay. And then regardless, we're going to do n plus plus. 
we do n clone equals end minus begin. And that's going to be the total number of ports. So if we do like a port scan 79, 81, 81, minus 79. <laughs> Just to check ourselves real quick. It's going to be two. Mm, wait, mm, like one more than that. Uh... Uh, where is that? One plus. Because that's going to be. Um, it like ports 79 through 82. This is inclusive. Let's see, 79, 80, 81, 82. 79, 80. 80. Yeah, so we do one plus that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If you start and begin, start and end at eighty, um, that only scans one port, and yeah, that would that would result to zero though. This is correct. Uh, N plus plus, and then if N is greater, no 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 no, no. Uh, N ports, and we do N one equals zero. Uh, and then if n is greater than n port or greater than equal to excuse me n ports break loop and that will break this iterative structure bringing the whole house down not declared that's fine that's sysprint very nice um that's there do you want to do the msh and do port scanner press next pw port port scanner dash b uh 99 dash e81 post next pw ah See, and we get our results back much quicker, even though the total scan will take quite a while. Um, nice. This gives us our useful information much faster. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Great. So port scanner is fixed. The power of channels. All right, and, I, I, and I'm just kind of assuming that this collapses properly on its own. But I guess it doesn't really matter. Cool. It's all in here now. Oh, boy. What is match? Match prints and then prints number. It's the, the number. Of occurrences of each character in supplied string argument in the supplied string argument is useful for debugging files in LaTeX when you're missing some matching parens. Oh, nice. Okay. To do read from standard input. Okay. Let's take a peek there, shall we? So we have a short program. Well, they committed a mortal sin though. They not use arg properly. Oh, do they use arg at all? Oh, they don't. Oh, yikes, okay. I guess they don't really need it. Okay, okay, okay. Bike shed, and then we'll let this slide for now and get to that at the end. 
So first things first, we have a erroneous raise as a normal function. Correct that. Now that compiles just fine. H C match. Alright, it doesn't read from matches. I don't know. CB.B. Oh, oh god. He calls it matches in the usage. Um, Alright. It's an awful lot of occurrences. I think that is untrue. Um, uh, <laughs> that looks like some kind of overflow. Okay, well, uh, good talk. Let's try, let's see how we can fix this. Uh, implement unroll. Wow, this, these names are really just all over the place, huh? Um, so we have matches, we take head of the tail of args, which seems to work because we seem to get the string out okay. And then array with the number of spaces equal to the number of matches, or the number of characters to match. Okay, oh, this is probably a pretty standard character count algorithm then. Um, okay, buff, array one of byte, okay. This probably isn't Unicode friendly, unfortunately, which would be a fun thing to add to this because I would consider that a fix. This is supporting only ASCII in 2020 is basically a bug. So, we have a file descriptor, and a buff, sysread, this seems pretty normal. Or, i equals to zero, i says the number of characters which we can match to. If matches i is equal to this, indices i plus plus. It strikes me as slightly wrong, just at first glance. I'd be happy to be proven um, wrong here. Let me see. Let me see. Matches eyes, buff zero, indices. What is, what is indices? Array of int. And Tab percent D. This is turn. It's such a big number. So, is this a sys read for every single character? Yes, it is. I guess the ability, maybe they were planning on buffering this. We do have buffered input. It's not called bio. Buffio? Buffio. No. IO buff. Oh, God. I think I have two buffered IO in Purgatorio because I like, borrowed one that someone had contributed and put it in there with their stuff. And then there's the one that's built in normally. Buffio, buffered. Oh, but seek, read. If by n int. Lead line buff greater than zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is I? Why is I here? Um, fun fact, this I colon equals zero embedded in this four. It doesn't work like it does in like a C99 and later C where it's like scoped just to this block. It actually declares it in the parent block. There's actually secretly an I declaration put in right here and then it's referenced here. So you can, we can reference I outside of this four block. So this is tidy, but um, misleading. In fact, uh, Get C, get B. 
unget c put b. See, I think this is what we want. Maybe I just start rewriting it. Um, is we can do like this. Yeah, let's just do this. Let's just uh, get ourselves a buff IO and start rewriting this rather than understanding it, shall we? <clears throat> so. Very nice. Uh, let's make sure this still builds. Seems that way. And then if this example, and I love, I love how Plan 9 style manuals seem to just always have exactly, exactly what I want um, in terms of examples. Not always, but the likelihood seems to be much higher. Okay, so I'm new to plan 9 for an inferno uh, purgatorio. Uh, yeah. Why? Is that a why purgatorio or uh, is that a, a, a Spanishism or something like that? Uh, uh, t -t 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 -t. Welcome, Fossil. Yes, I agree. Welcome! <laughs> for every reason that jumps out to me really in a really fun way. Uh, like a like com on like NT or something. Uh, oh god. Okay. Okay. Let's uh let's get this buff IO in here. Uh, is schooling by brute force? Yes, I agree. Um, it really is. I do think it's a really good way to learn. Like if you just take your jaw and throw it down to grindstone. I will preface like the total sum of like limbo i've written is on like my github and in limbo by example which is i mean i like more limbo than i think like most people on earth but uh i forgot a comma after inferno why why purgatorio uh purgatorio uh i linked it a little bit above in chat maybe you didn't see it maybe someone can repost it it's my browser is so slow uh purgatorio is my fork from inferno that i made so that i could uh, be naive and uh, uh, play fast and loose with uh, quality of life changes as I perceived them in Inferno without having to go through Charles. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with Charles, uh, Charles Forsyth, or anything he does. I, he's an incredibly smart person and I respect him immensely. He's always been nice when I've asked him questions. Uh, it's just that uh, I want <laughs> I want to be able to uh, change the system how I want and without having to go through anyone. So I did that. And uh, Kurt and the Nine Front folks were nice enough to let me host it there. I used a mirror on GitHub. Uh, and then I shoved a bunch of stuff in it. And in the long term, the goal, I guess, is to shove like all of the useful community contributed stuff into it. But I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, so, and that's kind of stalled because that's really time consuming. It's really time consuming to sit down with some random person's code that presumably works and determine if it's worth pulling in. And then <laughs> even if, like, even if you do, then you have to put it in the system. Then you have to make sure everything still builds, make sure it builds with the rest of the system, make sure there's no name conflict, make sure you have the name, the man in the right place. And then you get all of that and then you check it in and then you push it and then you and then usually I'm paranoid and I do like a clean clone and build, uh, which really should be in like Docker or something. I don't know. Uh, like just something else. Probably not Docker. Probably like a abuse plan that namespaces and use like a source hut builder or something. I would, I would honestly probably put Purgatory on source hut so that I can have like a plan nine builder attached to it or something like that. Um, yeah. All right. So, oh, Jesus Christ. Um, file name. All right, all this FD bullshit, 
out of here. Don't need that. LC no, don't care. Get out of here. Um, so I have this reader. It's buff. Nah, get out of here. Um, uh, yeah, of course. Um, like I accept patches too. So if you like clone Purgatorio and you find something that's just broken or wrong, like earlier we found um, an, a, a rogue man page name that shouldn't have existed. Um, or rather the man page doesn't exist, so it probably needed updated. Uh, so we went, we made a note of that in a Purgatorio issue ticket, which is I think number 17. Um, getting rid of some erroneous curly braces here uh t -t 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 and we're going no we're just gonna get rid of this am i this bold i am this bold um so we're gonna do this and then we're gonna do what do we call buffio open super final mode mode da 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 uh, ref file buff get c reads a single unicode character there we go this this is what i want this is correct um we're gonna do r equal equals uh buffer reader dot is it dot i think it is yes it is because it's a property uh, get c what's the signature for get c returns an in um, value is an int now I suppose if these return something like zero or less it's probably an error it's return something like that <laughs> Oh yes, and we should probably uh, if reader is equal to nil, raise sys s print uh, error could not open percent s percent r. That's gonna be file name, and percent r populates itself. So this just works. Syntax error. What did I do? Oh, I see. File name. Syntax error. What did I do? Oh, I see. I stole a parenthesis. Without importing local IO buff from a variable. Oh, right, yes, because you need to import, and they actually show us this at the top. We see the IO buff import buff IO. Um, so, what this is, is uh, a little piece of import logic. So when we load the buffio module, uh, we load buffio as an instance of this module. So the local variable name is lowercase buffio and big buffio is the module type, the actual name, uh, as we saw in here, of thing that is type module. And then this io buff is defined in here as, uh, it's just right here, as an ADT. And to use this, even if it, like if we store a value which is of this type, we must import this type uh, into our namespace. Uh, so we do import buffio. Uh, so if you use ADTs for modules, you must import uh, the ADT type from the module instance you are using. That is all. Uh, something like that. Very good. Local R not referenced. Excellent. Um, so then if um, if uh, so it's really it would be nice to have like a hash map here but I'm not sure there is like an easy hash map I know there's a built in one and Charles has one but uh, the built in one as I recall isn't very good so uh, what was the solution in the old match um they did something for that 
So, array lend matches of int. I see this kind of uh, falls over, huh? Oh, I see. So you can use the, it's a one-to-one -one of matches. So we do, um, it's a really horrible method, really. Um, where i equal and equals zero, i is less than len matches. This is the number of characters we can match. Um, and if a uh, match is i, so the character within the match table, if it is the same as the as this rune, then we do. I'm going to rename this to counts rather than indices. That just works better on my head. Counts count, or matches, excuse me. Uh, counts, counts is equal to R. Counts I plus. Excellent. And I actually want. Um, I don't want this to be an int. I want this to be a big. I don't remember how uh, you're supposed to print big, so that the format specifier for that is uh, man print. Hope it tells me the verbs. Um, do, 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 do. Maybe it's just D. Um, let's try to build. Of type big to r of type or er, excuse me this is matches not counts don't mind me argument of type big <laughs> so then if we go in here at limbo by example that there is a types g big star slash star dot b er, all right, there's no G, there's just grep. Um, ah, BD is the way of representing that. Um, percent BD counts matches I percent. Um, yeah. So this is an IWPL code counts. Match, 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 match. I want to rename this to match. It's kind of, but it's already match, whatever. Match cb.b. Oh, this goes forever. We don't have a terminator. Um, if r is uh, God, what does he call this module? We're getting rid of this. We need to call this match. Kill unroll. Yes. Oh, there's a straight ESD audio floating around. If we close the window, it'll kill it anyways. Sometimes when you run a program, it doesn't really run the program, which is kind of weird to think about. And you have to check like file descriptor tables or some shit. Um, do you have any brokens? No? Uh, what is that ESD audio floating around? We need to just fuck off with that. Alright. Um, right, so... But limbo. Right, 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 right. Uh, if r is less than e less than equal to zero, this is just my guess. Um, break. And then this should be exit, not return. So that will free stuff. Match cb.b. 
Why is that number? Ah, it's uninitialized. That's the real answer. It was never overflow. So, oh man, what a good lesson actually. So inside of the arrays example, you don't get initialized memory by default in limbo. Like you, like you do with C, you don't get initialized memory. Rather, you have to initialize it yourself and they actually give us a piece of syntax to do this. It's just really weird. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, I hate this file. It's like, uh, yeah, there it is. Array of, and then, so, 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 so. You see this counts, right? And, oh man. And this is like kind of undocumented too, as I recall. So like, no one should feel bad for not knowing this. I barely know this exists. You can throw in a pattern matching statement here. And we can say as a star match for like a case matching, for anything that we find, it's going to be the big value of zero. You can use this to make structured arrays, um, which you can kind of think of like tuples uh, in their own way, kind of, I think. Um, I don't know if they need to be homogenous, but uh, you get the idea. So match cb.b. And we get 65 occurrences. There it is. It just works. Um, I don't like that it surrounds it in curly braces. I really don't like that. Um, or not in curly braces, square brackets. Let's not do that. If we do anything, put it in like single quotes. Match. Let's do like this cv.b. Ah. Oh, and with buff.io, it's so fast. I think like down here, we're supposed to do like a uh, reader equals nil or something, like nil that out. Or maybe uh, and buff.io, like a close or something. Yeah, there's, uh, there's like a dot close, reader dot close. There we go. Just uh, make sure we don't leak anything. So match, match, blah, 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 all the symbols. Uh, and this doesn't dedupe, by the way, so if we have duplicates. Uh, yeah, see, uh, now, now it will update all of them, but it doesn't dedupe, which is kind of silly. But oh well. And then now let's do the cosmetic cleanups. We want it all along. Uh, and I'm going to call this matches. So we're going to move match.b, matches.b. Matches, excuse you. Matches. Matches. I cannot express why I want it this way, but I want it this way. That is good enough for me. Um, me. We're gonna include arg. Actually, let me show you a cool trick. Um, let me just set myself up real quick. Arg set usage before I lose the string to the ether. Um, runes. Why not? They're not characters. They're runes. That's what they are. Um, that down here. So now, if we ever wanted to add command line flags. We just have that. Um, and then args equals arg arg b. Yes, yes. Oh, sure. Arg is not declared. Yes. So I'm going to show you this cool trick where even for sys, um, we all have this in one, one function that we got rid of this usage function. It's all in one function. We don't need variables declared out here. 
We don't need any of that. We don't even need this import. Um, imports can be function local. They don't need to be anywhere else. It can be IO buff import buff IO. Yeah, why not? You can just do that here. You can do that right here. And now it is ARG. They can be function local. ARG path. But this is not declared. Oh, contraire, my friend. It's just somewhere else. Don't need this exit either. Don't need that paren. Don't need that paren. Tidy, 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 tidy. Very nice. Limbo matches. Wonderful. RM match. Dot star matches. Matches. Very nice. Um, CV dot B. Oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, it's because it strips out the uh, <laughs> strips out the uh, zero dereference of nil. Oh dear, everything's falling apart. I probably did something really naughty, making these all local. Okay, okay. Just to appease this, um, let's just do this. There we go. Okay, six occurrences of exclamation point at once, comma, nine times, no dollars, six percent, really? Pluses 65 and use the unmatched parens, not a problem. This is a pretty naive way of doing unmatched parens. You'd really want something like a resembling kind of an S expression parser where you follow down like the nested parentheses and then you like descend, 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 and then you catch it as you ascend and you kind of know where it's supposed to match and you can admit exactly where that is and also where it's supposedly matching parent is. Um, I don't have the brain power to do that right now. I have it somewhere in small lisp on my source hut. Which I think that f that link is on my Twitch channel profile. No ampersands. How, how are there this many percents? What is... Oh my god, there's no G. I thought I added G to uh, Purgatorio, but maybe I never pushed that. Oh, it's because it's for format as fires, of course. Silly. I was thinking modulus. I was like, I don't use modulus anywhere. I don't need modules at all. Um, right. So, put limbo. So this is just done. Uh, matches. Uh, arg. Cb dot b. A r g. Nice. All right. Very good. What's next? Oh, it's just have a million things in here. Unroll. Didn't we already see an unroll? Did you just copy and paste unroll to make matches? Are these secretly gonna be oh my god, they're the same they're the same program. You know what that means though? It means I can copy and paste our better implementation and it'll probably be just better. Text into characters one per line. Uh Okay. Yeah, that's like exactly this program, I guess. Uh it's gonna don't mind me. Doink. Didn't even change the module name. So lazy. Who would just copy and paste an entire program into another program? For example code? Unroll file name. Do do do. Should be two. So we'll have argv zero and we'll have argv one, which is the final name. No reason we couldn't have more though. We don't need counts. We don't need matches. 
file name, open file name, reader, da 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 da. And all we do is sys print sent C. Oh, excuse me. Um, this, no, 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 no. Still need this. Ah, uh, let me do this print. Set C R. And we get one rune. Good line. Excellent. Unroll CB dot B. Oops. One, six. Head of tail to, oh right, because we have one less than that. Silly, 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 silly me. Because I copy pasted code. Ah, cb.b looks great, one character per line. Uh, Still going, huh? Cool. That works. All right. So unrolls fixed. What do we got in here? Banner. We got CP. ESD. Fixed. ESD audio def, which we fixed. Matches, which we fixed. Worry.gif. Web view and transpop are all we have left. Before we get to the actual book examples and I think I'll stop before I get to the book examples. Output's a table of transition probabilities of going from one value to another? What the fuck? Oh, you discovered buff IO in this one. Ooh, that must be the one that ships with Inferno, which means IO buff is, or whatever the hell the other one was, is probably. Oh wow, it hits you. Ha! Okay. Is this build? It'd be pretty sweet if it built. Oh, yes. Trans. Bob. The. CB dot B. Trans. Bob. Dash H. Oh, it's, Jesus Christ. Okay, so it's just broken. How is it like this? Oh, this one uses args too. But it doesn't set usage though. There's a fucking usage function. It's empty! What? Fuck out of here. Oh my god, this is really just not come with usage? Alright. Well, we're gonna figure out how to use it. No one can stop us. Transprop. What a difficult name. Uh, so the usage at the top maybe as an example. Oh man! <laughs> All right, dash C. Oh, lots of args. Ah, oh, erg, 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 erg. Cool. Dash C. Column. Let's say call. Uh, dash s mm -hmm. hi morally or oh, mora is that you i bet you'll know if I, it's the you that i'm talking about is you oh good it's so nice to see you um oh man is this tokenized temp comma what does that mean? To S. States? These are the file containing numbers. We're going from one value to another. I'm going to guess. Doing for combination 0 to A. State. I'm going to say states. That's my best guess. Hi, Mora. Yes. Oh, good. I'm so glad it's you. Um. Chef input file. 
I don't need to say. Say in file. How about that? Um. Oh, this is so cursed. Uh, dash m max. We'll just say max. How about that? There. Limbo. Nice. Trans prob dash h. Ah, oh, good. This is this is a good start. <laughs> um. All right. I feel significantly better about this now. Let's run his example. I don't know what q dot data is. Oh wait, this is a firm. What are you doing? So uh, what we're doing, Mora, is uh, if you're familiar with the book Inferno Programming with Limbo, which if you're not, um, there's a there's a, there's a stuff about it, and I think a PDF of it on the cat v site. It's like a doc dot cat v uh, dot org slash inferno slash books slash ipwl or something like that. Uh, I'm going through, so there's chatter on the Inferno mailing list uh, that IPWL had a lot of uh, code that doesn't work anymore and potentially false statements and maybe not deliberately false, but maybe like uh, were true in Inferno 3rd edition or something like that and were no longer true. Uh, and they have been no longer true for so long that it's kind of a moot point. Uh, and recently the IPWL site went down and uh, I had to mirror it. Uh, it's like ipwl.postnix.pw or whatever. Uh, and there, some of that was example code. And I sent the example code to the mailing list because I guess no one had that or whatever outside of the versions in the book. And I had a mirror of the site from 2018 when I mirrored, like, and I archived like everything or crawled like everything related to Inferno or whatever. Um, I should probably get that to like archive.org at some point, but. One day, one day, one day. Uh, but for now, I have IPWL and I have IPWL code, and I'm going through and I'm fixing it. And uh, we've fixed all but two files. We have transprov.b and webview.b left. And then I guess next time I do this, I'll do the actual example code. Is from you from Limbo by Example? Yeah, uh, Limbo by Example is a good starting point um for understanding it i've linked i've linked to it i've already used it actually i cloned it um like right here to refer to it for uh a few pieces of syntax that we've seen uh yeah you liberal word it's okay i don't really know limbo either it's just limbo is a pretty simple language uh it's more complex than go syntactically i think i would say i would say i think it's syntactically certainly more delicate and the compiler is less helpful and there's more going on. like it has uh, ADTs, al al algebraic data type, algebraic data types, and uh, a few like pattern matching constructs that just don't exist. And um, polymorphism, technically, though I guess now we kind of have that. Though the polymorphism in Go looks really similar to the polymorphism in Limbo. If you want a good uh, insight into that, you can. I mean, hell, we can just look at uh, the Limbo by example generics right now. Um, I don't have any. Go the proposed Go generic code, but you can find that on your own. Um, generic step B, click, click. If you look at like Go generics, Go to generics, but just find the most recent one. So let's look at this really cursed polymorphic code real quick um, before my brain melts down for the night. Uh, so this is an ADT that's polymorphic over the type T. Um, T inside the ADT. So I'll just say uh, cap T. Uh, low t. So low t is a ref to an IO buff. Uh, so some kind of buff IO interface thing is happening here. And then ws uh, is a method uh, that is a method on the rds, uh, uh, on the rd uh, of type t. And it returns an int. So it's polymorphic on this type T. And then over here, the, there's several steps to this polymorphism. And the syntax, I think, is really obnoxious because they use curly braces everywhere, and it's not actually helpful. Um, and there's this pick keyword inside an ADT. And pick says that this ADT num 
can be one of a string or an int polymorphically uh and can contain or it's a union it's a union thing not a, actually excuse me this isn't so much polymorphic as a union it's a union picked between a string and an int it'll contain either s or d and if my memory serves you can actually refer to both s or d and they'll point to whichever one's correct so if you refer to like uh int instance of num and do dot s on it you'll get the integer dot d as though it were s and vice versa uh, which is pretty neat uh, and stringify returns a string and it's a method on the num adt going down we can combine these two concepts my cat's begging for food this is what happened at the end of my last stream uh polymorphic and pick tag type at the same time uh we have an adt polymorphic over the type cap t uh cap t is prescribed to the value w and then there's a this union with no other options of just s in here uh, but you get the general idea you can play with this if you really want this is just to make everything kind of sane and constrain this example um, and then we just have a equality test and this equality method is going to be really important this is equality of two words and this is polymorphic on the ref word uh, so you can uh, it's a method contained within the word to compare two words um, Okay, yeah, bear with me here, because um, this is like the hardest example on limbo by example. This was a nightmare to write because none of this is like documented. This was all kind of reversed out of like the system source uh, from Charles and a few oddball references uh, in like the limbo language reference and it's uh, whatever the second release, like the extension to it or whatever. I don't remember what the name is called. It doesn't matter. Um, oh God. All right, so do, 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 do. Remember that RD type all the way up here? It's polymorphic over type cap T. So here we make it polymorphic where cap T is a ref IO buff. Uh, and we use this to read from standard input. Neat. Uh, and this is a constructor on it where we construct the RD and pass in in, which will take place of T here. And we don't need to pass in anything for the methods. Those are defined elsewhere. Um, Right, so then we call rd.ws, that's that method, blah, 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 blah. Oh my god, excuse me. Um, oh, and you remember that num type with the picked union in it? There's a string or an int. There we initialize that adt as an int with a value of five. And a string, that's a value of string of five. Um, that is, this ADT is instantiated, and then a constructor is called to pass in this value or whatever. And we take the ref of it. Do, 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 and then we call stringify in both of those because they have that method. And then, if you remember that word one that's both polymorphic over cap T and has a pick, though conveniently it's only string, we can see us declare that here as a list of. Uh, that type of references to a word instance, polymorphic over int, and containing a string in its union. And then, oh my god, yeah, I remember. I need to put this down to keep myself sane. ADT, bracket, type, pick, tag, uh, fields, blah, 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 blah. Um, so S word, string word, or whatever. Uh, ref word, polymorphic over int, dot, string in its constructor. Uh, and we pass in <laughs> an int of nine and smiley. Man, I don't even know. Um, but that's that. Uh, is that the... Yeah, whatever. Uh, that's showing off... Uh, inside the word we have... Yeah, the W and the S. So the W, since it's polymorphic over the type int, we have int and we give we, we pass in an int instance because this int is the actual ADT type int, not a integer, right? And we construct it with the nine and then we pass in smiley as the S string where smiley is this. Okay, there we go, there we go. All right, this isn't so bad. No, no, C is fucking psychopathic. We're fine, we're fine. Um Whew. And then, all right, oh, we got past that. Wow, okay. And then we append that to the list. This is the the list append operator. Um, and then 
<laughs> we append in and we declare in place without assigning to a variable a ref of a word, polymorphic over an int, with a string and its union, with an int, uh, or cap int of seven and a frowny string, and we append that. Uh, note that we're using these two different values. And we do if, uh, no, this isn't C++. Uh, 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 if is a member, which is a function, which is, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, S word, which is, as we may recall, the smiley word, where it's just the smiley face, um, that ADT. If this ADT is in the list of ADTs, print, we find it. How do we search the list of ADTs and is member? We'll get there in a second. Backwards, so we reverse the words. Is I, I thought this was kind of clever because it's gap backwards, but we say backwards um, as the reverse of it. Um, <laughs> uh, head was this, head is this, blah, blah, blah. We do that. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get back to the polymorphism, Sean. You got distracted. Uh, so here, <laughs> ah, okay, so WS uh, strips out the white space or whatever, I guess. Um, and so this is how I declare the method WS of RD polymorphic over the type T. Um, and we see it's self-referential, so the RD refers to self-ref of RD polymorphic over cap T, returns an int, while is a space C, uh, which is read out of... Uh... Okay, okay, okay. So, so what this does is this loop reads out of the buffio reader inside of the RD ADT, polymorphic over type T, um, and we read a byte out of it, and if that's a that byte is a space, which is the, for is white space, which we can see is defined here as either a space, a backslash r backslash g backslash n. Um, happy happy for RC enthusiasts. Wow, I want to be an RC enthusiast. RC is a marvelous shell. Oh hi Paul. Um, <laughs> this would probably help. Maybe maybe it would help. Um, thank you thank you Paul. Uh. Is space rd get b read a byte out da 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 reads until we have all the spaces out and then it returns c um yeah once we're out of that so that's pretty cool um and <laughs> uh the method eq for quality over the adt word yeah there's no yeah, yeah there's no syntax highlighting uh uh polymorphic over cap t takes in an A and a B, which are both references to a word ADT instance. And then it does a shallow comparison because at this point I was pretty burned out and this explanation is already getting a little tired. Uh, it compares the two uh, .w uh, properties within the two words if they're, and then that's just, that's just it. Um, stringify, the method is declared as num.stringify, which is much less noisy. Uh, B self ref num, so you get an access to the original num is what this is. So self is to whatever num called this, and the reference uh, to that. So you modify the original caller uh, rather than some other instance. And then we do pick, but not in a definition, but at uh, but at like uh, t -t 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 just like just like as a statement, a statement pick. So pick xv. Um, colon equals v and uh we see v is the is the num is like the value here um oh i i did i didn't do great with the naming here pull request accepted uh string so if it's a string we return at the dot s if it's an int we return the dot d i believe that this unionification uh is shown in the blog post uh for like with like go limbo and everything um that might be like struct inheritance, I don't remember. It should be in there though, it should be in there though somewhere. Uh, showing that you can call like SD or DS. Maybe that was ALEF, I don't remember. Might be ALEF. Uh, it matches. This is uh, the polymorphic function that isn't a method, that's polymorphic over cap T for an XT and LT. And it looks, if X is a member of L, L is a list of T. And then this is a really neat little piece of polymorphic syntax in here too, um, which 
<laughs> isn't a statement because the function hasn't started yet. You'll notice there's no curly brace here. The function starts here. This is the this is the function block, right? Um, so this right here <laughs> is this is a pattern matching thing that's undocumented that I ran across uh, in uh, incidentally the list libraries, which this is almost like exact copy of. Uh, and we check to see this type t cap t. We pattern match it for having a property eq, which is a method which takes an a and a b of type t and returns an int. So we see basically, this is like an interface test to test to see if these two ADTs both have a, uh, a, 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 a method uh, of a certain type. So this is like much less tidy than like Go or even like TypeScript interfaces. Um, but it gets the job done, I suppose, but it only works under certain conditions. I remember being a little fragile. Anyways, this iterates through it and tests and calls t.eq. Uh, C function argument type declarations. Yeah, it is, it is, it is, it is. There's, cause you have to remember our C enthusiast. Limbo came out after plan nine, oof, I want to say third edition. So they had already seen Aleph and not been satisfied with it. And they had Plan 9C and I extended the Plan 9C compiler to be a little oopsie doopsie in its own ways, where you have like struct member inheritance and then Ken added typester. Uh, that's uh, for, for the record, uh, typester. If you search that on my GitHub, there's a repository that explains what that is. Basically, it allows function overloading inside C. Um, and then like the struct inheritance is like you can, uh, if you have a struct person, no, if you have a struct worker, let's say that contains an unnamed person struct inside of it and person has a property name, you can say like worker W and then you say W dot name and it just tra traverses through the person down into name. It's like a, I want to say breath first search algorithm, uh, through them, uh, Chris, um, <laughs> and then this reverses a list. Um, this doesn't need equality, so we don't constrain it in the same way we do here. And this just iterates through and reverses the list. Uh, it pairs two lists of separate types. Ah, yes, yeah, so this is a polymorphic function, polymorphic over type cap T1, cap T2. These could have been Unicode probably. Uh, sub one, sub two, whatever. We'll just call them sub one, sub two, anyways. And L one, L two, um, and then it uh, makes a tuple list uh, out of yeah, it makes a tuple list, I guess, of two of the same length. I guess is what that is. Anyways, you can uh, this code's on GitHub. You can play with it to your heart's content there too. My throat's a little dry. Wow. Anywho, let's run this transprob and see what happens. Uh, touch q dot data. What if it's empty? Ah, sum of entries in trans probability matrix is zero. You know, I'm just gonna go on a limb and say this works. I don't know enough math, I think, to do this one. So uh, I'ma just not. So let's do web view and then we can be done for the night. Um, does web, web view build? Ah, good, 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 good. Some, something uh, nice. So uh, for those that haven't seen rays in limbo fourth edition, maybe later, I'm not sure. Uh, ceased being a function and became like a keyword operator. Probability matrices scare me too. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm awake enough to uh, to do probability matrices. Um, do 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 do. Is that it? Is that all of them? Context not referenced. Oh no. And not referenced. Oh no. Well, if context isn't referenced, we'll just nil it out, and nothing will break. He says. Very, very hopefully. What's n? Oh, I see. I wonder if we can underscore that to drop it. No, the underscore is a name. Okay, so it doesn't have it yet. Nil, just nil it out. Yeah, there we go. Um, all right. 
web view. Oh. Uh. Oh boy. Okay. So what this? <laughs> uh, let's uh stack forty one eighty before I explain. Just to make sure I'm not bullshitting. Uh, there. Um. That load web grab disk. E. Hold on. Web. So I think this requires a shell load. Maybe this is a library? No, no, they're loading it like it's an executable. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so I think you have to like load it through the shell. Anyways, anyways, so what this is, shpid4180, that's how we got the stack trace. Web view could not load this web grab this link. Type check web grab HTTP get mismatch. Um, so web grabs HTTP get uh, function is mismatching, I guess. Is that what I am led to believe here? Um, I could not load link type check zero. Um, loading shell programs a little finicky, as I recall. Uh, this lib is you need to load it through uh, the shell loader. Dude, Typester is crazy. Ken Thompson made Typester, didn't like tell anyone, question mark, because it's not documented anywhere, and then just like kind of, like, I guess it was like one of the last things he did, and he just kind of like fucked off or whatever, and just like went to Google or whatever he did next. I don't know. Yeah, Typester is crazy. You know, uh, fuck. Um, Let's see, hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe I can maybe I can find typester and show it off. Um or at least show off the example code. Uh let me find it. Alright. So, isn't this a namespace issue? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, no, I don't think so, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, I'm gonna show off Typester real quick. Uh, oh, repos is already there. Okay. Um, oh, Limbo by Example is also already here. Nice. Um, and IO buff. Wow. Okay. Uh, OS git clone. There you go. Okay. Okay, 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 I'm gonna minimize everything else. Ah, oh, good, we have the acne background. I was almost forgot that this frozen acne was in the background here. Plumber, because I'm paranoid, acne dot. All right, so what is Typester? What is it? I've never seen it before, they said. Well, me neither, nobody's seen it before. Um. <laughs> Where's the simple one? Here's the simple one. Let's get rid of the complex one so no one's distracted. Um, so, 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 so. I think I got this from Mischief, as I might recall. Uh, this is the original link. Uh, so, typester as a keyword. Typester point, two underscore point. Void main as usual. Fumped install, p, p fumped. Um, Wow, wherever that is, did that even make it into this file? Who cares, I guess. Um, who knows if this even compiles, but pretty close. Uh, point A, point this, point B, point this. Um, ooh, maybe pfumpt is like in draw.h. Oh god, wait, that's this is for plan 9, this isn't for limbo, so I guess that's a right clicking that doesn't work even if it's reflex. Let's make a point there, point there, point C. Um, C equals add point blah blah. Um, and then we see, I think the magic is we have typester point to under point and we see point, point under, <laughs> add under point A, point B, point R, R dot X equals A dot X plus B dot X, R dot Y equals A dot Y plus B dot Y return R. And this is an overload of add. So 
I, I don't know why used is here. Yeah, there you go, hamsters. Thank you. That's so. So the GitHub. I don't know if I pasted the GitHub. Um, there you go. But yeah, the 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 GitHub is the same as what's on uh Postnix there, hamsters. Um. But basically, this is like operator overloading in C, not C plus plus in C, and the Plan Nine C compilers. Um, and there's a little name mangling kind of happening here. Uh, and this add gets used like I, I want to say it's like here, right? Because this is a point. This isn't a a primitive type. This is a point struct type uh, from draw, presumably. Uh, and they can be now be added together, uh, which is functionally the same, I suppose, as this add point. Now, I don't know exactly how this hooks in onto the compiler, but it is like fucking crazy. And then you see he prints both A plus B and add point demonstrate this. Um, I don't have a nine on hand to show this off. Um, yeah, maybe uh, another stream, maybe a dedicated video, honestly. But uh, you can grab this and uh, throw it down on the Plan 9 box and see what you get. Um, yeah, PCTV, the file that ha that RC Enthusiast uh, just linked, uh, explains it. That's also in the thingamajig. Okay, okay, let's... I, I need to, like, figure out what they want to do with web grab here. Um... So, we want to load webgrab.dis, and there's a way to load programs from the shell. I found it once. Find it again. Um, ooh, I might even talk about it. Oh, wow, this might be in limbo by example. Hmm, be really happy if this just has exactly what I want in, like, modules. <laughs> Doesn't seem that way. Correct dash N I shall start let's start at B. See if that gets us anything. No matches. Alright, well I tried. Alright, we're on our own, it seems. But I found it once before, I have vivid memories of it. So there's like a dedicated shell library for loading stuff like this. Module interface to the shell. Ooh, that might just be it. Um, oh, I think I, use, I, I, I figured out how to do it for um, when I was trying to make Docker as like a parody of Docker. Oh man, okay, hold on, let me... It's like a, I have like a run CMD command or something in there. Uh, limbo playground maybe has it. And I have to wait a very long time for Firefox to load. Yeah, do CMD, do CMD. Basically, the idea was is that you could specify um, a namespace and then a file structure, and it would compose the this namespace for you and take a program and run it in there and run it in this namespace. Basically, the idea that what Docker wants to do, right? That, that you want to pre pre specify namespace and uh, you just run your program and it runs in that namespace. It would be really restricted or it could be exactly like another namespace because you just take a namespace from any pro process, export the dot, or export the NS file, take that, write that to a namespace file, load it later. Doesn't matter. Proto file to rearrange it, as I recall. Um, or you need like a proto file to make the directories. I think that was my hack for it. Okay, so let me see if this has what I want. I'm looking in GitHub real quick. Uh, spawn run cmd ah yes okay uh this has what i want i think 
as I recall. So it uses CMD something as a Well, let's just see. Um, what's in repos actually? Do I have Limbo Playground? No, okay. OS git clone. CD Limbo Playground. CD do CMD. Acme. Way other Acme. So I may replace you with other Acme. <sighs> Rid of you, don't need you, no, might need you in a second. Read column, don't need that. Reshape, resize, make bigger, nice. Um so ah yes, we use sh.m. We see here. Uh and then down here in load command, if it can't find the file, see load command cmd and then c init context arg v. Ah, that's why you need the ctx. Um, uh, yes, yes, yes. So they do need the ctx context. Maybe this never worked. Is what I'm guessing. Um, hmm. And they want to use the read config function out of it. I don't know if you can do this, man. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you can just load another binary and just do exactly this. I mean, in theory, you should be able to, right? I mean, that's the whole idea. I don't know. And what was the exact error again? There isn't an error at compile time, but then if we do, um, what is this called, web view? But what, what's even the usage for this? Like, dash D URIs, let's say web view, postnix.pw, right. Link type check web grab HTTP get zero. Oh, is there even an HTTP get function? Hmm. Reference. Does web grab even have this function? Oh my god, we have this banner shell floating around up here. I. Right. Um. Let's go. CD Apple. Uh. C C M D. Up, grab in here. Yeah, there you are. All right, web grab. Do you have an HTTP get function? Yes, seems that way. And you want to use that. You ref parsed URL. URL make URL. Wow, what is URL? What are you doing here? Web grabs module named web grab? It is. That's good. I want to say the trick for being able to load something is you need to have like some pre-existing knowledge about the thing you're loading you can't just blindly load it um could not load link type check http get hmm. zero i don't know what this really means i don't know why there's a zero there um because this is like a it's raising they could not load it but it's clearly there 
which makes me wonder. The issue is, um, I mean, like flashbacks to figuring this out on my own. Maybe it's in the Docker code that I do this kind of loading exactly like this. Maybe not. Maybe it was just experiments. Maybe it was all a dream. Docker is not Docker. Load. No, I do like the same thing. But I load it through a command to just run it. But it does let you call init. It's very interesting. I wonder why it feels the need to remind me about HTTP get specifically. Um, this slash um. maybe it's some other way that I'm loading it webfs yeah I wish that they had webfs on Inferno, they don't really have that, as I recall. Maybe the type is wrong here. So we load. Wait, do we call web grab before we load it? What's happening here? No, no, we load web grab all the way up here. Here net context. Yeah, I think it was a nine front issue. I think you might be right. Um, I wonder, Becker FS would be very interesting, wouldn't it? I don't know. As we hit this raise, we hit this link type check error, which I think. What it's trying to tell me here is that uh, whatever I'm doing here is not allowed. Like I want to say it got more strict about loading like uh, would-be shell programs ambiguously. But maybe this was never right. What if we isolate this? Can I write a program dot b um c p suicide dot b load dot b how about that make my life a little easier. Can I do type to find web grab web grab? Right. And then I do web grab equals load slash this slash web grab dot this. All right, easy me to say web grab module name. How do I do that? Cat load type error. error. 
Uh... Christ. Oh, I see. There's also a URL library. It takes a parsed URL. Which is in fact exactly what they want to do here. This HTTP get function. Oh, maybe, wait, hold on. Oh, it defines the web grab module inside of itself. Oh, sweet Jesus. That was, I think that's it. That's what I'm like missing. Um, but I don't think these module definitions were matched because the HTTP get function is not exported, right? Like, uh, I don't think you can just add it. The module will uh, will clash. Like, so if we do this, say it's not a member, right? Um, and then if we go in, all right, good night, Mora. I really should do that soon. I might do that on a second if I deem this, whatever they're doing, close enough to impossible that I stop caring, or rather than impossible, too much of a pain. Um, Right, so they want this in here with everything else. It's going to be an fn u ref parse URL, blah, blah, blah. Um, syntax error. Thank you. Then read config is not a member. I bet that's in here somewhere. Read config is a whole lot of nothing. Function though. Web view for link type check HTTP get blah blah blah. What is import? We need these imports. That's from sys. Um, URL, we do that. Um, Import, oh, excuse me, URL. Oh, let's get rid of this big error dialog. It's called limbo. Oh, I see, they do that there. I don't get that out of here. Minix on Yahoo video. Um, make it happen wow does yahoo even have a video <laughs> what's up man or not man i don't know i don't want to assume host urls type cannot be determined <sighs> wait do i not include url.m i do Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, ref. Oh, I see. They had to specify it to uh, URL, parse URL. Man, what is this shit? I think that it's like incompatible. Like you can't, like uh the way they want to use web grab I don't think is allowed. And I think it might be because we're actually fully qualifying this that it might have a separate sig like a differing signature. Um I don't know how to dump 
type checker signature of I don't know all the functions in uh the steps steps this the man this oh that's gonna that's gonna hit a lot of things um oh man the step that's what I said and view look man signature uh, and one limbo one limbo grab dash i signature <laughs> let me see about debugging information ah the type definitions and call frames uh... I think I remember doing this once I was trying to learn how this worked To links here. Yeah, because yeah, what they're trying to do here is, I think, possible. I think, like, though. I do wonder why in here, for example. They don't have to fully qualify the HTTP get signature and redo. Cause like, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. It's a, uh, I appreciate that compliment. I did not make the theme. I credit the theme though. Um, in the uh, in the about page. of type ref type error um parsed urls type cannot be determined ref url a parsed url is imported from url here So it should just be available. It doesn't like it. It does not like it, Sam I am. Don't get it. I think I'm not awake enough for this. Not quite there yet. I'm just very curious though why it works here because I think they're doing the right thing the web grab module and then you define you redefine the module but I don't but I think by redefining the module it won't work which is why this doesn't work like if they actually exported HTTP get you call because like if we had a library and we didn't export a function I don't think you can call it even if you explicitly enumerate it, or maybe that's not true. I think I'm too tired to actually experiment this at, with that. I think I've been streaming since about eight, um, which makes this dangerously close to like three to four hours. So I'm, it's almost midnight here. I think I'm gonna shut down stream, um, but I really appreciate this. I'll upload uh, a recording of this to YouTube later, um, though I'll probably edit out a little from the beginning and the end. Um, but thank you everyone for attending. I appreciate it and I appreciate the support. Sorry to end so quickly after you joined us uh, in script. But yeah, I had fun.
and fixing everything except web view uh, felt pretty good. I'll put this up, I'll put, put the code up along with the YouTube video on GitHub in a repository on my personal GitHub so as to not mar the archive with working code. Um, since the archive is more preservatory than anything when we make exceptions. But uh, yeah, good night everyone, take care. Cheers, stay safe.